Writing data to files is one of the more common operations in software development. Whether it's persisting log messages to your disk, storing a JSON configuration, or even saving your current salary in an Excel sheet so you can come back in a few years and realize that you haven't had a raise in a long time because your boss always told you that there was no budget for it. And although each house in your crappy neighborhood now costs $5 million minimum. Rust, like many other languages, does of course not only have one, but... several ways to persist data to your disk. And thus, it's probably a good idea to learn about some different ways to do it. In total, there are four different idiomatic methods we will cover in this video that all build upon each other. They all give you different levels of flexibility and they also come with their own advantages and disadvantages. So let's get into it. Let's begin with the simplest method of getting your data into a file. First, create a function around the logic so you have all logic related to writing your data to a file in one place. It's just a simple function that takes a path to a file and the data to write as input arguments and returns a result that either contains unit or possible errors. Next, import fs from the standard library. fs has a super convenient function called write that does exactly what you're looking for. The great thing is that you only need to pass the path and the data to it and it creates a file and dumps all your data into that file. Then quickly return OK unit here to make the function work. And now use the function down below. As it returns a result, you need to handle both the success case if the operation succeeds, and of course the error case if things don't go as smoothly as planned. And if you don't want to deal with strings but use binary data directly, you can easily switch the method and call signatures like this. Let's take a look at both the advantages and disadvantages of this method. First of all, it's convenient to use. It takes merely one line of code and you have your data written to a file. Additionally, fswrite itself takes both string and binary data. But an issue with this method is that it always overwrites the file, so no appending here. And its performance highly depends on the size of your data. If you drop a very large chunk of data, it might take a long while. Overall, if you don't have too many requirements, use this method and you're good to go. Let's now look at another method that breaks up the previous method into its actual implementation. This gives you a little more flexibility, but you will see that in a minute or two. Let's create a function with the same signature as before. And this time, import stdfs and stdfsio write. Instead of using that convenient API from stdfs like the last time, you can directly use the file API. In this case, you can use file create with the path and you get a file that implements the trait stdio write. This allows you to use write all to write all data at once and also write, which leaves handling of possible unwritten bytes to you. There are also other helpful functions the trade offers, and it's also foundation for other operations like writing to TCP streams and such. Quickly return OK unit again, and then use that function down below as you did before. The only difference to the previous method is that you now have to convert strings into binary data yourself. And if you want to do that, you can change the function and call signatures like this, but you basically only have to switch the place of the conversion. Let's also take a quick look at both the advantages and disadvantages of this method. First of all, this method is still convenient to use, because it only takes a few lines of code to make it work, depending on whether you use write or write all. And this time, it's flexible to extend and alter, as you will see in a minute. This method, however, will still always overwrite the file. And its performance highly depends on the size of your data. You write only small chunks of data, you lose out, you write large chunks, and you can also run into issues. It's still a good method to use and the base for the others to come, so keep this in the back of your head. Until now, all you could do was overwrite the same file over and over again. Time to change that by learning to append data to a file. Once again, start with a function to keep the logic in one place. Then, import stdfs and stdio write again. This time, you don't use fsfile, but fsopen options. It has several benefits over file as it allows you to customize how the file is handled. You can, for example, easily specify that a file is to be created if it doesn't exist, and additionally, that data shall be appended if the file already exists. As before, you can use write and write all to get your data into the file. And I think by now, you have probably realized where this is going. Every method builds upon the previous ones. Lastly, return OK unit again and use the function down below. As previously, you can switch the function and call signatures like this if you want to work with binary data directly. As before, let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages. You've now come to a point where you have full control over how the file is handled. 
Additionally, it's still only a few lines of code, depending on whether you use write or write all. Lastly, you have more control over the performance of the operation now. You can split the data you write and thus try to optimize the number of operations it takes to get all data into the file. But this method does, of course, also come with some disadvantages. Every call to write or write all is a potential system call and additionally writes to the file system, which can be costly if you choose the wrong data size. This method is still an improvement over the last one, as open options gives you more flexibility and allows you to also append data to already existing files. The last method builds on the previous two ones and adds something to the mix that optimizes writing to files for you automatically. A buff writer. No, sorry, not that buff writer. This one here. Let's create a function like before and import stdfs and stdio buff writer and write. Next, you can use fs open options again to get a reference to your file. This time, however, you take the file reference and pass it to a buff writer. This buff writer implements logic that optimizes the writing process a little. Internally, a buff writer uses a buffer and decides when to dump the content of its buffer into the actual file. Buff writer itself also implements the write trait, so you have the same functions available as before. With write and write all, you can decide how to fill the internal buffer. Any call might lead to the buff writer deciding to actually empty its buffer into the file it writes to. The important thing about a buff writer is that you should try to flush it at the end, just to make sure that you really write everything. Now return OK unit once again and use your function like before. As with all other methods, you can switch the function and call signatures like this to directly deal with binary data. Let's, for the last time, take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of this method. You still have full control over how you handle the file, because you still work with open options. And this gives you a lot of flexibility. Thanks to BuffWriter, you also have optimized the writing process without having to implement any chunking yourself now. Overall, this method is still a little more difficult to use. And it also takes a little more code to implement. If you want a general implementation for many use cases, it's probably best to implement it this way. For now, that's it for this video. Overall, you learned about four different methods to write data to files in Rust. And all of these methods are actually not that different but built upon each other as they use the same basic building blocks. Now it's up to you to decide which level of flexibility you really need for your task at hand. Until then, see you in the next video.